In this video, we focus on a corollary that gives us another characterization of the greatest common divisor of two elements. Here, we're assuming that we've got two integers that are not both zero, and we have d, a positive integer, that's the greatest common divisor of them both. Well, if that's the case, then we say that d is a common divisor of a and b, and also that if there's some other element c that divides a and b, then that c also has to divide d. So how is this different from the definition of the greatest common divisor? There is a slight difference, namely this here idea that c divides d if it also divides a and b. Before, if you recall, we had that d was the greatest common divisor of a and b if two things were satisfied. Our definition told us that first, it had to be a common divisor of both a and b. And second, if there was some c that also divided a and b, then that c had to be less than or equal to d. And so what we're saying here is not only does c have to be less than or equal to d, it actually has to divide d. So because this is an if and only if, we have two statements to prove, and we'll start with the forest direction, which means we're going to start by proving that if d is the greatest common divisor of a and b, then these two criteria are satisfied. So first, let's just say that d is the greatest common divisor of two integers a and b. then we see already that one is satisfied by the definition of greatest common divisor. So it really remains to show that this second property holds uh, if D is the GCD. So suppose there is some C, and so this exists, the symbol I'm writing here means exists. Suppose there exists a C, that's an integer, So that C divides A and C divides B. We want to show that C also divides D. Well, using the definition of division, this means that we can write A as C times K and B as C times L for some integers K and L. Also, because D is the greatest common divisor of A and B, we can use Bezu's identity to write D as a linear combination of A and B. So let's say that there exists a U and a V so that this equality holds true. So what do we have? Let's see. We have that D is equal to AU plus BV. And so let's use some substitutions to see what else we can get. We know that A is going to be equal to C times K. So instead of writing A, I'll write CK here times U. And then similarly, B is equal to C times L, so I'll write CL times V. And if I factor out a C from both of these terms, I'm going to be left with C times KU plus C, excuse me, not plus C, plus LV. And so if I let this be, I don't know, t, we see that d equals c times t for some integer t. And so that is precisely what we need to say that c divides d. And so we've proved the forward direction. So the second thing we want to do is assume that these two criteria are satisfied and prove that that implies that D has to be the greatest common divisor of A and B. And so I will draw an arrow that indicates that we're moving in the backwards direction this time. And so if we start with criteria one, 
It's just the same condition in the greatest common divisor definition that we introduced earlier. So condition one is satisfied in the definition of GCD. We really only need to worry about this second condition, namely that C has to be less than or equal to D. And what is C again? If we have some C that divides A and C that divides D, excuse me, B, then we want to, sh then C divides D by the conditions that we know that this integer D satisfied. What we want to show is that C is less than or equal to D. So by an earlier remark, since C is a divisor of D, we have that C is less than or equal to the absolute value of D. And that's from the remark that stated that any divisor of D had to be less than or equal to the absolute value of D. And so because D is a positive integer, this is the same thing as saying C is less than or equal to D because the absolute value of D is D. And so now we see that C satisfies the all of the conditions that we need in that second piece of the greatest common divisor definition. And so D satisfies the second condition. in the definition of the greatest common divisor. So it follows that the greatest common divisor of A and B is D.